three, two, one. It is Monday night. It's five and we are live at Stone Coat Countertop Headquarters and we are excited to bring to you Woodworking School, Craft Coat, Project Coat. We got new ideas, fresh techniques, and new products that are gonna change the way that you think about epoxy. We're gonna show you some of the projects that we've been working on and we wanna know what are your questions. Start typing them, we're gonna answer them live. We appreciate you being live with us tonight. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. Welcome to Stone Coat Countertops Live. How's everybody doing? Catherine, how are you doing? I am so excited to be back and doing this tonight with you guys. We are live. We are back. We are in the Stone Coat Countertop headquarters in the good U.S. of A. in Oregon on Pacific Standard Time. We want to welcome you. Thank you for allowing us to send you an inundation of emails, but we are so excited about what we have for you tonight. How is everybody acting with customer services? The phone's blowing up. Oh my goodness. Everyone is so excited to hear about the projects we're doing. Give the, us their ideas and we are thrilled to bring them here to you tonight, for you tonight. So you saw a little sneak preview. We have a product called Craft Coat, okay? At Stone Coat, we get a lot of calls. We get a lot of requests. We listen to your feedback. We read every single comment. And we found that you guys are looking for an epoxy that's good for samples, that's good to learn with, that's good to really get your hands into this amazing medium and learn how to use epoxy without the added premium expense of our Stone Coat heat resistant, our art coat, those kind of products. So we bring to you Craft coat. coat, okay? Craft Coat is really ahead of its class. We worked with our chemist to get a formulation that will give you exactly what you're looking for at an amazing price point. So we've got the price point down as tight as we can get this at $64 for a gallon. That's gonna get you what you're looking for to learn how to use epoxy. So if you guys are interested in learning this trade, Craft Coat can get you started. What are your thoughts? So I just want you to tell them the difference. So what's the difference between our craft coat and maybe our SCC regular stone coat countertops product? Good question. So if you're looking for the heat resistance, the scratch resistance, the UV resistance, the long open working time, uh, those kind of things, they're gonna be found in our premium formulations. We, okay. we developed those over years of working with our products knowing what you need in, in, in longevity of countertops and, and, and moving on to floors and these kind of different high-end formulations. Well, a lot of people want to do a craft project. They right. want to do a decoupage. They want to do something to, to learn how to mix and meld colors. And that's what this is formulated for. Okay. And we wanted to really bring you the best formulation we could in that class. So does that answer your question? I think so. So if I just want to get started and get my hands kind of sticky <laughs> we get to be do our craft coat craft coat but if i've got a big projects something that i know in my countertops or some other big long-term project then i would always go to our stone coat countertops regular epoxy is that right you got it no, see this right. you like that it's right time so, for so it's five o'clock wait it would go other way five o'clock okay it's five it's five o'clock somewhere and uh <laughs> and we got project coat what is project coat and why do we have this formulation project coat was brought because a lot of artists, a lot of woodworkers, a lot of countertop guys, a lot of floor guys, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people with ideas uh, want to learn epoxy, but they don't know how to cross over. A lot of artists don't really have the ability maybe to get a giant wood slab and to get uh, maybe a quick coat to seal the edges and a casting to fill a deep pour and then a top coat. So project coat is an all-in-one formulation. That can get tricky. Anytime you do an all-in-one product, sometimes you're gonna sacrifice one thing for the next. And so project coat is a perfect marriage for all of those things at a small scale. We're gonna show you tonight how we made this project with one product. The seal coats, the flood, the cast, everything was done with project coat. We're gonna show you exactly how we do it in a school classroom setting. Cool. Okay, we get asked all the time, when's your next class? When's your next hands-on training? It's right now and it's free. Uh, it's also gonna be 
available on a PDF. This video is going to be uploaded as soon as we're done in a short and condensed version that doesn't have all of this so that you get to learn how to do this step by step. Have you been seeing those PDFs we're putting out? Oh my goodness. Mitch is on top of that. He, they are amazing. If you haven't checked them out, definitely go to our website. Go check out those PDFs. They are step by step. Each of us learn totally different. And so what we've been doing here at Stonecoat, or at least I, I take credit for some of their uh, efforts, but what they've been doing is trying to make sure we hit all of those different learning platforms. And one of those is to give that step-by-step -step in picture and words taken right from those videos. They are beautiful and really great when you're going through a project and want to know what to, the next step is. Mitch, why don't you talk about why we're doing those PDFs? And I want to know, guys, if you like those step-by-step -step instructions, I think that deserves a big old thumbs up right now. Hit that button. Mitch, why don't you talk about those PDFs? What's up guys? Big Mitch here behind the control desk. Here is the latest Woodworking School step-by-step -step landing page or uh, downloadable PDF. You could, uh, after this video, after tonight's show, hop on this landing page found in our project recipes and it'll cover step-by-step -step how to do this project. Nice. If you guys are looking for more of those, let us know in the comments, what are you looking to learn step by step? Also, where are you guys chiming in from? We want to know, where are you? We get, you know, worldwide people using Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. We want to say a big thank you. And I want to introduce a couple of new people that we have on our team. Uh, Chris, Chris is not new, but come back here, Chris, Dr. Phil. And let's go, Luke. Get back here, man. They didn't know this was going to happen. So this is our creation team. These are the guys that have been putting these videos together. Dr. Phil Mama doesn't said. have his uh, shirt yet. This is Dr. Right, Phil. What's up, Doc? Howdy. We got Luke. Luke was at the guys? summit. And Luke, Luke is just the man behind the machines, man. He's, he's kicking butt. And then Chris is the lead of our creation team. Guys, give them your love. Uh, what do you guys have to say to everybody watching? You got to speak to the mic, though, you know. Oh, you know. Uh, give us a thumbs up, please. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe. Sub oh, I like yeah. that one. Subscribe. Right? Chris, guys, what do you got? You guys are all great. I love reading the comments every time we do a live. It's so much fun. Right. Man, look at you, Chris. You're way tall, bro. You're so bro. tall. <laughs> Dang. So great. Thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. Luke looks great. If you guys That's like the, the new content, it's because of these guys and Mitch and the team effort. It's been amazing. We have been listening to your feedback, and I can't wait to talk about what we have next. So on the Stone Coat Countertop Insiders Group, there's so many massive uh, ideas that are flowing and shared, and we got two people we want to shout out, and we have a new award. We've been talking about this, and we gave a sneak peek of this. This is our new award, and what? we're going to show you a video of how we made this. Okay. But, Mitch, go ahead and go to overhead. So right here, what we did is we, we made a casting of a YouTube play button, and we have a resin play button. This thing is totally cool. Check that out. Oh. So nice. we are excited to good. award this to people on the insiders group that make video that show how they did something with Stone Coat or show a really cool project that they made. Have you seen some cool projects? Right. So we have a different award. So tell them the difference between the two awards because some, are, some of these people are tuning in for the first time. So tell them the difference. Well, actually, they both go together. So okay. this is our Stone Coat Countertop You Got This Award. And this okay. is our resin play button. If okay. you get the resin play button, you automatically get the You Got This Award. Of course, unless you've already been awarded the You Got This Award, then you get the button. So we want to talk about first Ryan Day. Ryan Day has done some outstanding projects yeah, yeah. over the years. He's really an epoxy expert. He has sound advice that he gives on insiders all of the time. And I really want Mitch to show why he's getting this award. You got that, Mike. Here we go. Here's a little bit of Ryan Day's work. He's been a member of Stone Coat Countertops Insiders for nearly a year, and he puts together these amazing little videos. He does so many different outstanding epoxy projects. Ryan Day, keep up the good work. Keep sharing those videos and sharing that sound advice. Like Mike said, your advice is outstanding. It's on point. Keep up that good work, Ryan. All right, thanks, man. We also have another award to give. I alluded to this award 
in a podcast right. with Rick Simmons. Rick is a woodworker. He's a man. He's a machine. And he busts <laughs> out epoxy like no other. I want to give him the resin play button. Rick Simmons, Mitch, you want to show some of his stuff? Definitely Rick Simmons, old souls, man. We love Rick. He does amazing work. He does some outstanding woodworking projects, big, small, whatever they are, check them out. Rick Simmons, old souls. So we're working on a video right now called Fake Fraudulent Counterfeit YouTube Play <laughs> Button, and that's what we made with our mold, and we're gonna show you exactly how to make a fake YouTube Play Button. Why would you wanna do that? I'm not sure, but we're gonna show you how, and we're gonna we show like you to. This, this, this product, which is really cool, how we made the mold super easy to use, and very durable, that's coming soon. Let us know, do you wanna learn more about how to make a mold or do you wanna see us make another river table? Let us know. All right, we're gonna move on guys. I'm super excited to show you the first segment. We're gonna show you exactly how we started this woodworking project. Nice. But I got some news for you. This project right here is one of a hundred. So we actually put together a hundred kits. Nice. Okay, these hundred kits are designed to help you learn this trade. And even if you already know this trade and you wanna show your customers small scale of something that you're doing, these are perfect kits for that. So we're gonna show you tonight exactly how to do this at scale, quickly, efficiently, and the right way. So without further ado, you're gonna learn and then we're gonna show you the kits that Mitch put together. All right, here we go, let's get started. From crafters to contractors, they all love woodworking with epoxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the tips and tricks to take a mini project and turn it into something fancy. We're gonna show you step by step how to take a river table and turn it into a clock. The sky's the limit. You can do chessboard, you can do serving trays, cheese board, everything in between. Learn right now, step by step, the secrets to epoxy and wood. Visit StoneCoatCountertops.com, stay tuned, and enjoy the video. Okay guys, we're looking for something to pull off of our form after we're done, something that's reusable that we can use over and over again, and I think acrylic is a good answer for that. I see a lot of people pour over acrylic, and it peels off really simply. Let's test it out. We're taking small river table kits where people can't maybe afford a giant wood slab and they want to learn the trade. Found which one we're getting right there. I think that'll contrast good, let's do it. All right guys, step one, we're gonna take this acrylic and we're gonna cut it into strips. The reason we're gonna cut it into strips is then we have a way to make forms over and over again on our small craft projects without rebuilding or buying another thing. We're gonna use hot glue, we're gonna use acrylic and we're gonna get started right now. We're gonna cut our strips in two inch widths. The reason we're doing that is none of our projects are taller than two inches and it'll catch any spillage. Pro tip, you wanna use a saw blade with a lot of tooth per inch because it's gonna cut cleaner on acrylic. You don't wanna use a rough blade, it'll chip it out. Fine tooth saw blade worked wonders on that acrylic. Perfect size strips, they're reusable. Let's make our form hot glue and acrylic. I think acrylic's gonna be perfect for this craft style project. It wouldn't work so well on a giant river table because acrylic's expensive unless you can reuse it. So because I can reuse this over and over again on a small project with hot glue on the strips, I think it's gonna be the perfect tool of choice. Let's test it without any spray release and see how well it comes off of this mold. Does this acrylic make me look better? <laughs> what should we do while it warms up? Oh, let's go get the wood. Step one in woodworking school. Pick out your project and get ready to pour. What we're gonna do is actually make our form around our project. How wide do we want it? How deep do we want it? We got our pieces picked out. I have a really good idea of where I'm gonna go with this project, but I'm gonna use our project coat. We designed this to be a hybrid style epoxy. For a small scale project like this, it helps us learn how to pour casting as well as our top coat and our seal coats all in one. You wouldn't want to use this on large scale for full durability and full heat and scratch resistance, but for a project like this to learn woodworking with epoxy without the added cost of specialty products, this is designed for you. Let's get started. I really like the character and all these different pieces that we've chosen. I think these are going to make good fun projects. I really like that this was cut out of the same piece of wood and then it's just flipped into itself. I, I think this is going to be a very neat centerpiece. And how big do we want it? I think we'll go, I think we'll go like, like that big. 
So I need to glue a piece right here. So I'm gonna just start gluing these in. Okay, once I get that kind of tacked, I'm gonna come through here and just make it watertight. When I started this, I should have ran this strip right at the edge of this slab, but because I made a mistake and ran it long here, I'll just cut this one to size. That cuts good. All right, I really like this hot glue acrylic idea. I think it's gonna work well. I'm gonna just tape the outside just to be safe. I'll use some inexpensive masking tape to stop any leaks, just in case that hot glue has any kind of hole through it. I don't think it does, but I'd rather err on the side of caution. I think we're ready for our seal coat. Let's do it. Pro tip, how do you mix a small amount of epoxy at once with a stir stick so you don't waste anything with a measuring cup? Some of the measuring cups only go up to four ounces at the very minimum. We don't need that much, this is a small project. I'm gonna take two clear cups and I'm simply going to mark them at the same height. Project coat, let's get started. Part B, part A, one to one ratio. We're gonna thoroughly mix this with a paint stick. I'm gonna just mix this until I see the color become uniform. I'm also gonna scrape the sides and the bottom of my bucket. This is a small batch, you don't need to be in a hurry and all we're doing is applying a seal coat. You can also use any excess that you mix at this time to just use in the river, that's okay. They're gonna bond together and become one piece but then you don't waste any mass. That's a pro tip. Guys, I think I'm gonna turn this piece into a clock. I went to Walmart to look for the parts for a clock and the hands, the minute and the second. I couldn't find it, but I did find clocks that I'm gonna cannibalize and create my own clock. So, what are you gonna make? What would you think would be a good project for this kind of a piece? Checkers, chess, cribbage, I don't know, cheese board, serving tray, what comes to mind? Let us know in the comments below. Heck, even a Lazy Susan, man, that spins around as a centerpiece on a, on a kitchen table, maybe for Thanksgiving. Heck, it'd be a great Mother's Day present. Art piece, sample for river tables, showcase that you can do these skills and pay the bills. All right, I think we're mixed up. Yeah, I know I'm mixed up, but I don't know if this is mixed up. I think we're good. Let's apply our seal coat. I'm just gonna use my gloved hand and I'm just gonna apply it to the edges. Simple as that. Heat gun, blow dryer, torch, whatever you want to pop the bubbles, something with heat in it like this works fairly decent. I like to use a torch, but because we're an acrylic form, I think I'm just gonna use the heat gun. Okay, choices, choices. I have time to think about them. I'm gonna pour a river and I'm gonna tint it with our metallic. What color should I use? I'll think about that while this dries and then I'll come back and I'll pour the river and we'll see what this project turns into. I'll see you in a bit. Class is in session. Woodworking school projects are ready for you. We have 100 kits. It's gonna include our project coat, the kit of your choice with whatever live edge slab that you choose to make your project after and your own choice of a metallic color. This is gonna create a one of a kind unique piece, you can go to stonecoatcountertops.com. We have all these kits for sale right now so that you can learn woodworking with epoxy in a class style project that won't break the bank. We'll see you at stonecoatcountertops.com. Guys, are you learning right now? If you came to a woodworking school in Oregon, what would you learn? Uh, I don't know. You would learn this. You okay. would learn exactly <laughs> what you're learning right now and it's free. It's right. free. It's so we have Project Coat. Yeah. What have I started doing already? Well, they were watching our segment. So you started, you got started. You yeah. started getting everything ready. So I was like enthralled in watching the video, but you already were part of it. Yeah, so, we kinda, you know. I've kind of seen that before. I know. Right? Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to mix up a one to one ratio of our Project Coat. Now, Project Coat, again, it was designed for this particular type of project. Mm -hmm. It's a specific formulation. It actually cures a little bit slower at mass so that we don't over generate heat, but it also cures fast enough to use as a seal coat and a flood coat. But keep in mind, you wouldn't want to use this at large mass because it would overheat because it'd be too much. So we've designed these kits to learn and to grow your skills and learn really cool projects. We're also going to have a contest. Did I tell you about the contest? I haven't heard about the contest. So we're gonna have a contest. Anybody who gets one of these kits, join our contest. You might win a resin play button. You might win maybe a bigger slab to do something with. You might win a You Got This Award. You're gonna win something cool. Okay. I actually haven't picked what they're gonna win yet. So I know. that's why I'm like pretending. We haven't Maybe you could give ahead. us an idea of what you'd want. Yeah, what do you wanna what win? What do you want? <laughs> but guys, Give us your entries, make something cool. We're gonna leave it open for a little bit. We'll talk more about that on Insiders Group on Facebook on the Stone Coat Countertop Insiders. So get your kit, start thinking, what am I gonna make 
and make something cool. Right. All right, so we're gonna show you exactly what color we did. While you watch this next segment, I want you to think, what colors would you guys want to see tonight? What do you wanna see? You do, do you know yet? I, I, let's see what they wanna do. Oh, Mitch oh, has something. Mitch What's has up, something. Mitch? Let me show these awesome viewers where to find these kits. So on our homepage, on our homepage here, you'll scroll down, woodworking school kits. Click on there. Oh boy. Here we are. You have 100 to choose from. Each, like, like you heard in the video, each kit comes with the half gallon kit of project coat and your choice of metallic. Look at some of these pieces are out. Oh, one sold, 34 is out of stock. <laughs> Hurry, buy now guys, they're gonna go quick. Goes all the way down to 100. I uh, built these and I hid some good ones at the bottom, so get down there and buy. Check it out guys. Nice. Hey, hey guys. Hey guys, Billy Mays here with Project, I'm just kidding, no, it's not that hard of a sale. All right, let's get started. Think about what color you want. Here we go, right now, let's see what color we Okay guys, time for the next step on our woodworking school project. Let's get started. What we're gonna do is sand that first seal coat with 220 grit on our sandpaper. We'll wipe the dust. We'll mix a little bit more epoxy this time because we're not just doing a seal coat. We're gonna fill this entire middle section of our project up. What do I tint it with? There's so many different options. I'm gonna actually do black in this case, black metallic. That's gonna be black and tan. I think it'll really pop and make this lighter color wood look really fancy. Let's try that. Let me know how you think that will look and what color would you choose if this was your project? I'm gonna torch those bubbles out and then we'll do the rest. That looks really cool, man. That's a pretty color in there. That's sweet. I think I'm gonna pour some of this excess in these cracks here too, just to fill those in and then we'll sand it all flush. All right, we're gonna do the paint pyramid mix up. I'm gonna use a paint pyramid and stir this up a little bit to give it a cool design. All right, we're gonna let this coat dry. This is fun, it's easy, and we're learning all the steps to how to do this at scale and create any size table or conference table or project that we want using wood and epoxy. So even though I have a little air bubble coming up here, that means my edge wasn't perfectly sealed. You can do multiple seal coats, but I know I'm gonna come back and do clear over this. So a little air bubble will get sanded out and we'll do clear and it'll look just fine. So don't let that deter you and make you think you made a mistake. A lot of those turn out to be happy accidents. All right, we're ready for the next step. Our project coat is nice and hard in the center portion of this project because it's poured thicker. It does generate more heat when it's poured at mass, so it hardens quicker. Out here where we filled all these cracks and check marks right here, it's still gummy and kind of tacky. That's totally normal. Don't be alarmed at the different rates of curing. Just know that you're ready for the next step. So what we're gonna do is because our project coat will tighten up. As it hardens, it almost shrinks a little bit. So we were perfectly flush with the top and now we're slightly lower than the top. So we're gonna do a clear coat. This is gonna fill that up. It's gonna get us proud or taller than the top of our project so that when we sand, it makes everything nice and flush. Okay, we're gonna get all the air out. We've done a clear coat looking down into that tinted epoxy. Therefore, we need to get it crystal clear, and that's what we're gonna do using a torch or a heat gun. You simply wait a few minutes in between each torching pass, and that will allow the next layer of bubbles to come to the surface. Stone coat countertop epoxy is unique. Because of the working time, it allows us to let this air come to the surface, even though we mix with a drill or a paint stick. Cheers! If you have excess epoxy, it's a really cool pro tip to set a receptacle aside and over time pour the different excess into that container. Then you have a really cool epoxy blank that you could turn on a lathe or send to a friend to have them make you something cool. I have a lathe. I can make something cool. All right, we're gonna let this step dry. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll take it out of the mold. We'll sand it flush. We'll start our seal coats and get this project complete. Have you ever watched a video and wondered, how the heck did he do that? Cause you forgot all the steps. These steps are simple and we've put it into a step-by-step -step downloadable printable PDF found at stonecoatcountertops.com. Check it out after the video. All right, I'm done mixing. Are you guys done learning? No. No. <laughs> no. All right, uh, Mitch, I'm curious. 
What colors are people uh, requesting that we pour tonight? I am seeing uh, reds, gold, white, green, blue, uh, red, red, white, and blue. Let's do that. Nice. Huh? Hey, it's in the super appropriate. Seafoam green. I don't know. Uh, another red coffee. I don't know, dude. I think we're close to the 4th of July. I, I say we stick with America, yeah. red, white, and blue. Yeah. I'm dead. Let's do it. All right. Hold on. Uh, all right. Let's, let's do this. Guys, I'm really stoked for all the comments that we're getting. Uh, we're getting a lot of comments on where do I start? Uh, how do I mix? Where, wh where's your website? These kind of things. So if you're interested in getting started with epoxy, we have, we have people that are veterans to this trade that have been in it for years and they tell us, I've tried every epoxy I could get my hands on. I don't know what you're doing, but it's awesome. And we really appreciate, those are the coolest comments that we get, but we also get a lot of comments with somebody brand new, starting out, and those questions are super important. So we put together a little tab on our homepage called Epoxy Basics. Have you been on that tab? A lot. What are they gonna learn? Everything that's basic about epoxy. Definitely go there and check it out. <laughs> you know, epoxy is simple if you know the steps. So really? go visit stonecoatcountertops.com, click on Epoxy Basics, and dive into the world of fun. All right, so we're gonna pour out some clear. We're gonna mix some colors. Okay. While we do that, check out how we're gonna do the next step. Okay. Class is in session. Let's get started on the woodworking project. We have three distinct projects. We built three separate cubbies to house these projects. We used an old piece of melamine that I had in the shop. We screwed it down and we silicone that. That's important so we have no leakage into each project. We're also gonna seal coat these. This prevents air from coming out of those live edges into our rivers that we're gonna pour tonight. What color do you wanna see each river poured into? Let us know in the comments and let's get started. Okay. All right, we are mixing the metallics right now. We got red, we got white, and we got blue. Happy Independence Day and welcome to coolness. All right, so when I mix e uh, metallics, you got a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, you wanna mix it enough so that you don't get tadpoles. Tadpoles are caused when you undermix the metallics. These metallics have no filler. They're super concentrated, they go a long way. The more that you add, the more vibrant it's gonna be. Some of our river projects, we add just touches so it stays translucent, but it has that three-dimensional metallic look. But in this case, we're gonna make it pretty opaque. We're gonna go, go heavy with our metallics. Um, Mitch, let's get some questions going while we mix our epoxy. Again, we are live, we get to answer those live questions. All right, somebody would like you to invent bubble-free epoxy. <laughs> I don't think that's possible, guys. Popping bubbles is very easy with a blowtorch, heat gun, even a blow dryer works. We tested that out in Florida. So the air that gets into the epoxy, it may turn white on smaller batches. Just use a torch, blow dryer, heat gun, couple passes, it clears right up. Right. Mitch, uh, I'm curious, buddy. In, in, the, in the screen there, we got a couple of people uh, sitting behind you. Oh man, Marcy, Marcy took, took off. We gotta, we gotta show who's behind you and, and what they're doing here. Come up to the con All right, Mom, Marcy, come up to the control desk. <laughs> In the background, you can see my beautiful mother and sister. They're here joining us, watching live. Just let us know if you'd like to come watch us live here in person. Well, that was, uh, that that's, was improv. <laughs> I was going to say, that's off script. I don't know if we're prepared for that. I love it. Any other questions we can answer while we're mixing? Yeah, Mike, great timing. JJ Fording just asked, what about Artisan Summit 2.0? I was thinking about that for the, for the answer of that question was, well, maybe come to Artisan Summit and we'll do some samples there. So we had an amazing turnout at Artisan Summit. We actually are getting feedback every single day from people who attended and are implementing the things that they learned. We're getting questions from a lot of the speakers. Do we get to do it again? The answer is to be determined. No, we no we're doing it. We're doing it. So we're very excited to bring to you 
the talks that we had last year. We're going to publish some of those talks. We want your feedback on how those are and what you want to learn this year in 2020. Um, it's going to be around the same time, March or April of 2020, and it's going to be really epic. Some of the coolest things that happened there was the connections that were made from yeah. audience members to audience members. The speakers learned so much from people who attended. The fact of the matter is a collaborative effort when you're live face to face is so different than it is over the computer. We had a blast and made some lifelong friendships and we really hope to see you at Artisan Summit 2020. Another thing to keep in mind, we are going to keep that price point super low. It was a hundred dollar when you, it was like for a long time we left it at a hundred bucks. We just want you to be able to come. We do it in Vegas because the chicken the tickets are cheap it's easy to fly into and it's uh it's available right so right. so uh super excited let us know guys who else is going to attend artisan summit 2020 yeah i have another good question here from john he asks, can you mix metallic colors in the same spray bottle or epoxy cup and the answer to that john definitely man you can make your own custom colors, mixing two, three, whatever colors you want. Uh, when you mix many in one, don't over mix that or it'll all become one color. Okay. Lost my mouse. Guys, another pro tip. I really like that acrylic. That turned out really well. It, it came off beautifully and I didn't even have to use a release. On this little setup here, I used a release so it would pop off this melamine, but we get to pour three projects in one. Um, I also get to show my customers what a wood table looks like with red, with white, with blue, and I could do all the colors of the rainbow to really let them choose what they want in their next river project. Okay. All right, I'm ready to pour this. I'm super stoked to see how this looks, but you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to give you the honor of doing it. Um, oh, cool. When you pour this, you're going to just start in one end. Let nice. it fill nice and slow. Let it come up about a quarter inch. We'll torch the bubbles okay. or heat gun the bubbles and sure. we'll continue on. So why don't you go ahead and choose what color you want to do first. <gasps> Drum roll. I think we're going to do the one that I'm holding. Okay. Okay, so you're saying just start here and just let it flow yeah. out about a quarter of an inch. You got it. Okay. Cool. Wow. This is really pretty. And what color is this today, Mike? That's white and it is super vibrant. I don't know how much that's going to show up on camera. So one thing that you guys will notice is anything that you do in epoxy looks better in person, right? So <laughs> if you like it on camera, you love it in person. That's totally Okay, let's true. see gun those out. All right. All right, keep going. I really like that white. That is it's gonna super be cool. It's going to be really pretty. All right. I love how it's going in and filling in some of those cracks yes. and crevices. That's the more cracks, cool. the better. I like I like the cracks. I you do know? too. I think that's really pretty. Okay. All right. Let me let me get them up close. They want to see it up close. Okay. Yeah, I picked the wrong color for our already white. All right. Pour that. <laughs> already right white table. Sorry, guys. There you go. Nice. Nice. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, this is super pretty, so easy to do, guys. Super, do you see how, Mike, can you show them how it's going into those cracks and crevices and it's kind of filling that? Can you see that? Mitch, can you see that on camera? Oh yeah. That's so cool, because it's doing all that work for you, right? All right, torch those bubbles and then fill the rest. All right. Wow. We're just using a heat gun tonight. That is really cool, I really like that white. See how fast those bubbles just popped? Like, they're not an issue, guys. Okay, pour the rest of that in there and let's do the next color. Okay. Do you want me to pull it, pour it in the cracks or just go right in the middle, Mike? That's high technology right there. Guys, if you like that handy cam, crush the like button. Woo! Wow. That is. All right, let's get a handy cam cool. shot of Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Nice. Okay, so do I pour it in these cracks now, Mike? Or no, what just overfill. That's good right there. Yeah, you can. You can pour it in the cracks. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm going to do the red. Oh, right. You're brave. You ready, Mitch? Yeah, I'm on handy cam. Booyah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Heat gun me, Catherine. Okay. 
That is oh. hot right there. Nice. Beautiful. Going to second round. Oh, that is so cool. Hit it again. Final round. Oh, that is sick. Well, that was much faster than my four. <laughs> All right, you're 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 up on the blue. See, but you're, but you're learning, right? Right. All right, let's do. I've seen you finger paint and I wouldn't do that either. So you, you're way more experienced with being competent. Are you ready? Now I feel, are you gonna heat gun it? I will. Okay. I should have done blue first. Whoa, that's my hair. I got you, I got you, I looked out for it. All that's right. a pro tip, if you have long hair, keep it back. I really do have long hair. <laughs> All well, right. look at, see, see how it just I know. flows right it's there. It's great, it's gonna make a really cool. cool. Okay, go All again. Right. All right, it's gonna kind of settle there a little bit. All Fill right. it up. All right. Nice. Perfect. Okay. 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 Hey guys, who saw the turning blank with Carl Jacobson? That was a really fun video, but I'm totally hooked on on turning things now on the lathe. So I'm gonna use our excess epoxy gladly into a cup. If you have silicone trays, ice cube trays, molds, these kind of things, if you, you know what, Mitch? Maybe we should pour another resin play button. Ooh. Let's do it, and then somebody watching tonight could earn that resin play button. So Ooh. I'm gonna get that. Mitch, why don't you show the next segment of how this thing turned out? You got it. Okay guys, we're all set up. We're ready to go for our next step. I'm gonna take this out of the mold here. We're gonna remove our masking tape. The tape didn't get affected because no epoxy leaked out. That hot glue worked very well. All right, let's heat this up with a heat gun and we'll pop these off. It takes a little bit of force. You're gonna snap those off because it's really being glued by the epoxy. It's a nice clean release, but you gotta use a little bit of force. Don't be afraid to tell it who's boss. I added a few daubs of hot glue underneath this. So I'm gonna see how clean this releases now. I'm not gonna really heat that up. I'm just gonna try to pop it off. Let's see what happens. Hey, that worked really good. That is smooth too, goodness. So that's definitely gonna be reusable. Let's go ahead and remove this hot glue. We're gonna take this in the shop. We're gonna clean it up and we're gonna sand this epoxy so it's nice and flush on the top. We'll remove any of that black where we filled it in the cracks. We'll be ready for our seal coat. Let's do it. All right, guys, I'm gonna use a little bit of alcohol to loosen up this hot glue and we'll be able to scrape it off. I'm just gonna use a scrap piece of acrylic. Got a scraper. Option A, option B. I got a 60 grit sanding disc on my random orbital, or I got a metal sanding disc on my grinder. This is gonna remove this very quickly and aggressively. If you don't have experience using a grinder to remove epoxy, you may wanna stick with your sander. It works really good, it just takes a lot longer, and that's okay, this is a craft project. We're learning how to use epoxy in wood, and that's no problem, take your time, enjoy the process. Okay, I'm gonna sand this up to 220 grit and we'll be ready for the next step. Let's do it. Pro tip, guys. I haven't used this sandpaper to its full lifespan, so I'm gonna put it in my spare bucket and when I'm doing projects that don't require brand new sandpaper like teaching classes or woodworking projects with my kids, perfect treasure trove of sandpaper. Don't waste it. I just use my random orbital sander to put about a 1 8 inch round over 
over this edge. I also did it underneath that edge to make a nice smooth transition for that epoxy. I like the way that these cracks filled in with that black. That came out really nice. I sanded this up to 220 grit. I'm gonna wipe the dust and I'm ready for my seal coat. For a project this small, I don't need a super big squeegee. This would work, but you don't need it. I'm gonna use just a little Bondo spreader, a business card, a credit card, an old one of course, would work really good just spreading this seal coat. When doing seal coats, you only need one ounce per square foot. This is about a square foot. We only need one ounce of epoxy. Epoxy can be tricky when you're mixing it in very small amounts. So I'm gonna use my graduated mixing container. And if you look here on the side, there's a one-to-one -one marking here. Now that's very simple. I can do a very small amount of epoxy by first filling it up to this one and then filling it up to that one. And I don't need to mix a large amount of epoxy. Project coat, let's get started. I guess we are started. Let's keep going. There's one, two, one. Question of the day, how do you clean your paint stick? You don't, you just flip it over. You know what I love about mixing epoxy? I love mixing epoxy because you get to think about other things. Just mix your epoxy, think about what's coming up in your day, or maybe your life goals. You could even write a book in your head while mixing epoxy. I really think black and tan was the way to go on this box elder. It's really light and that black looks really sharp. I can't wait to get it wet again with this epoxy. You can see the sanding scratches and it's made it dull and that's just fine. As soon as we wet it out again, boom, it'll be like brand new. I'm gonna use my gloved hands to apply the seal coat to the edges, that's just fine. I could use a torch or a heat gun to remove this amount of air out of this clear coat. Either of them are gonna work, the torch will work faster, but let's test the heat gun. I'm really excited about that. It looks really good. It brought that box elder back to life. We're gonna let this seal coat set. We'll come back and do another seal coat as soon as it's dry. Think about the ability to sell river table furniture, tabletops, desktops, all kinds of things using wood and epoxy, having a bunch of these samples. You can pick out species, and metallic color combined right there in living color, I think that would really help your clients make decisions on the spot and get you more jobs in the shop. How to consolidate your trash using a glove? Just like that. All right, time to make a YouTube play button. Are you guys learning? Let us know in the comments below. Woodworking school is in session. Are you learning? I'm totally learning. This is great. So one thing to keep in mind with Project Coat, get it poured. Make sure you seal those edges. The better that you seal it, the less air that's going to come up into that river. These are flowing out really nice. Um, we, you will get a little bit of tightening. You might need to come back and do another coat to fill it flush so you can sand it flush. Okay, looks like we have enough of this blue. I haven't made a YouTube straight up opaque blue button yet. Nice. You wanna pour it? Sure. So I sprayed a little bit of release here. Mitch, you wanna to go, to uh, go to that shot? Right there, all, all right. right, let's, oh wait, hold on, I wanna show them. So this is the mold that we made, and that is our fraudulent counterfeit fake YouTube play button. <laughs> all right. So is there any rhyme or reason for this, Mike? Oh, uh, you just pour it in there. I like to start when I'm doing a mold, I pour it in one spot and just let it fill oh. um, for air and stuff like that. But honestly, you can't screw it up. Okay. And pour, you could pour it fast. That is cool. That is going to be a neat one. Oh, yeah. We had just enough in this one. All right. Who's going to win the next resin play button? Take video. Maybe edit your video a little bit. Maybe put a little bit of cool music that's copyright free in there. Maybe we even put it on one of our YouTube videos with your permission. Send that to Stone Coat Countertop Insiders and show us what you made tomorrow. All right, let's get started with, we got a little bit of clear here. You know what, I wanna see how we finish that project up. Let's consolidate these colors into a, a one cup because I'm gonna turn it on a lathe and tell us what you learned in this next segment. Okay guys, we're ready for our next seal coat. This first one is still quite tacky and that's okay. That means we don't have to sand between seal coats. If it's dried all the way, that's where you need to sand, wipe the dust, and then apply your next seal coat. 
You only need one ounce per square foot, but again, this is a small project and mixing one ounce is sometimes a little difficult. So we have a little bit more than an ounce and that's okay. I'm gonna use all of that on this seal coat. This wood is thirsty. You can see some dry spots and that's okay. Each seal coat you do is going to look better and better. There's a lot of value in doing a small project. You learn all the same steps you would as a big project with little stress because it's small. You're not going to waste a lot of money and epoxy. If you made a mistake, that's okay. This is easy to get right and this gives you the confidence to take on a little bit bigger projects as you continue down the epoxy road. This is a perfect example of why seal coats are important. The epoxy is being drawn in in this section. That's what I need to address before doing a final flood coat and that's why we do seal coats. All right, we got our guts. Okay, that second seal coat is done. It gave us really good coverage. There's no dry spots left on this wood. Another thing I wanted to mention is that pin dot that was a little problem yesterday. It looks as if it filled in. If it isn't, we'll address that by filling it with a little bit of a burning stick. If it is, no need to worry. What we're going to do is sand. We're going to wipe the dust. We're going to apply our third and final seal coat, and we're ready for our last step. Let's get going. Pro tip, clean the epoxy off of your gloves before grabbing your torch, your heat gun, or any other tools. It'll keep them less sticky, they'll last a lot longer, and you won't glue the buttons in place. I'm going to let this set up for a few hours. I think I'll be able to get that final flood coat on today, and this project will be all coated. I'll let it dry, I'll sand the drips, and I'll apply my hardware. Okay guys, we're ready to rock and roll. We got this coat dry. It's time for the next step. The key here is we're going to make this cannibalized clock mechanism work in our piece of wood, but the post sticking out from this mechanism is short. Therefore, we need to recess or router a slot into the back of our project, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. But first, I need to make a template so that I could clamp that template to this section and router that out professionally where it looks like it was done with a machine. There's our center. Nice. So you can just see the top of the clock mechanism. So we need to go through quite a bit more. When I routered this, I went all the way through my actual black that I tinted the river through. What did I learn? Well, I learned I better make my river proud so that uh, when I do these seal coats, it can go through or get a longer post, right? So a longer post on your clock mechanism will actually allow you to keep that color and not go into the seal coat. If you're gonna embed a clock mechanism in the back of your project, you better go opaque color all the way to the surface and you won't have a funky clear square that you gotta spray black. Okay, Chris, the guy behind the camera, had a great idea how to hide this black square. Chris, tell us about it, man. So we can make a mini river um, and mask it with clear epoxy instead of with tape, which would make a hard line. Okay, so you're gonna actually add a little bit of black metallic over this square to camouflage it. Right. Welcome to woodworking school. <laughs> okay, that should be a fair amount. I'm gonna pour clear. And then I'm going to remove some of the clear where I want the black to stay. If you want to reuse your chop brushes, because it's just a little project, you can store them in acetone. Acetone will prevent them from stiffening up. It usually gives you about a month of good use out of a brush. So now I'm going to just take some of this around this square and I'm just going to move it off. Now let's pour some of this black in there. 
Guys, this shows what experience really does for you. When you're trying a project and you have it in theory, you think it's gonna be just A1 amazing and no hiccups or speed bumps along the journey of, of that project. Well, in fact, there are. And that's just the fun of woodworking and art and epoxy and countertops and floors and all of these projects. That's why experience is key. And that's why this kit allows you to gain experience on a small scale without stress and just having fun. Let's recap. This is a fun project and the steps are simple. First, we built a form, then we sealed our edges. After that, we poured the river tinted with black metallic. You can choose any color you want to accentuate your project. After that, we did our seal coats and then finally our flood coat. Visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Go check out our woodworking school projects. Get yours right now because this project will open your mind to the possibilities of woodworking and epoxy. particular project that doesn't justify hiding the stunt, you know what I mean? Or like we do a lot of shower panels, we do a lot of uh, Wayne's coat, we do a lot of like game rooms, stuff like that, garage floors, all 3D metallic floors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Architects would, it's like a candy store, man. Yeah, okay. Well, take it easy, brother. Three, two, one, action. I go to StoneCoatCountertops.com for all my epoxy needs. Visit StoneCoatCountertops.com for all of your epoxy needs. <clears throat> Visit us at stonecoatcountertops.com for all of your epoxy needs. I'll get you next time, Gadget. Next time. Countertops. Chris, you're in deep trouble, dude. You put all those outtakes in and I didn't see it, bro. What's up with that, man? This is live. It is live. Guys, so the Tyvin Show said it's not live. The it's Tyvin live. Show, if it's not live, how do I know you said that, the Tyvin Show? <laughs> Good job, man. Thanks for the comments, guys. This has been so much fun. Catherine, what's your favorite color? I really like the blue. The blue. I do. I like the blue. But each of them are totally different. I, I'm actually really excited to see what the white looks like the when it comes out. The white looks sick. I love it. I've never done a river table white on white. And that well, is really... It's going to be cool. That is really beautiful. We'll have to do a follow-up with this one. Yes, I like we'll the white. I think the white's my favorite. Guys, we've been asked about the, the mold that we did the play button in. We are making a video, start to finish, how to make a mold like a pro, and Stone Coat Countertops is introducing mold making material for your epoxy business to turn your craft into cash. Visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Call for free project support. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you, you got, got this. this. We'll see you right after Mitch talks about the next video. <laughs> Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again.